I think we can all agree on one thing, that exercise is good for you. It obviously improves your fitness, it might increase your longevity and definitely protect you from disease. But here's a slightly more uncomfortable question. Does this protective effect of exercise still hold up when your diet goes completely off the rails? So can exercise actually protect you from the metabolic damage of short-term overeating? That's the, the question that we'll answer today with a super intriguing paper. All right, super excited for this one. Let's go straight into it. Hi everyone, welcome back to another World Science video. My name is Gomar, I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich, based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so, I studied and taught different aspects of exercise physiology, and my goal now is to bring some of that science that I learned back to you guys. Sometimes when you read work from other colleagues, from other researchers, I get a little bit jealous and I'm sometimes thinking, damn, I wish I came up with such an idea because it's such a good paper or such a good research idea and I wish yeah, I had published that study. But in any case, uh, what I'm going to talk about today is one of my all-time favorite studies and that does say uh, quite a bit. And it is from um, researchers from the University of Bath, a very good, well-known university uh, in the United uh, Kingdom and it has been published in 2013 in the Journal of Physiology. So that's a really good uh, journal related to physiology and everything uh, yeah, related to that. And um, it asked the question, if a person is overeating, like is consuming too many calories, can exercise still be protective in that case? We know that exercise is healthy. I mean, that's for sure. But if you overeat a lot, can exercise still be yeah, protective against certain things that I'm going to talk about today related to metabolic uh, damage and with, with insulin and so on? Because I think it's a very relevant question. There's a lot of people who think, okay, I um, eat too much, so whatever I do exercise-wise, it doesn't really matter because anyways, whatever, I, I my, my diet is not, not optimal. Let's see if this holds true. So what did they do? They had um, 26 participants, males, 25-year-olds, uh, young, healthy people. That's important. They were healthy. They didn't have a high BMI. They were just healthy students in this case. And they had a decent VO2 max. So that's, that's one of the population. And they had two groups. One group was a SIR group. They simply ate too many calories. What did they do? They had an um, increased habitual energy intake by 50%. So they measured in the, in the period before the study their habitual intake with um, meticulously measured the, all their food. Right, And then they knew, okay, how many calories are these people uh, eating? And then they added 50% of calories for seven days. So it was a short-term overfeeding study. They also had only maximal 4,000 steps. So that's a, a low amount of steps. They basically had to sit in the couch or whatever in their uh, auditorium and uh, don't do anything and eat way too many calories that they also got provided from the lab. So it was, it was well uh, measured. And then they also had another group that did exactly the same, but they added 75, sorry, 45 minutes of running at 70% of VO2 max. So they also had maximum 4,000 steps. They also had 5,000, uh, sorry, 50% more uh, calories, but they also added another bout of exercise that was a 45-minute run on a treadmill. So pretty boring, just continuous running. And this is how their total, let's say, their energy intake and energy consumption look like. Look at the middle bar here. You had the resting metabolic rate. That is obviously around 2,000, 2,500 kilocalories. That is always a uh, let's say, expanded to keep yourself alive, to keep your uh, organs uh, healthy and, and, and still working in your brain and so on. Then you have the, the diet-induced thermogenesis, DIT, that is simply some energy that is expended when you digest food. And then you also have a little white bar here that is your uh, physical activity from the 4,000 steps that also uh, yeah, uses up a little bit of energy. And then they top that up with a large amount of carbohydrates, uh, fats and protein, and also a little bit of ethanol, which is obviously alcohol in this case. So it had a large energy surplus for seven days. Okay. And then the other group did exactly the same, but look again at the middle bar. They had this PAEE, so physical activity uh, energy expenditure, was higher because they also had a 45-minute running, running bout. But again, this was uh, compensated by adding even more calories. So this was actually 60 or 70% uh, more calories than their habitual energy intake. So the goal was to also have that group eating way too many calories exactly 
50% than, more than what they were uh, expending on, on that day or during that week. So let's look at some data because that's that's the key part here, right? So they measured blood parameters, they measured uh, certain kind of things before and after this seven day yeah, uh, intervention period. And one of the things that is highly important for your metabolic health is how well you respond to a dose of carbohydrates and how your insulin response is. Because if I have been doing a lot of sports and I'm a healthy, I think, young man, relatively young man. If I eat a, a large bolus of carbohydrates, my insulin will spike. The, the glucose that is coming into my system will be taken up by the muscles and my blood glucose spikes for, for a little bit, for an hour or so, and then it comes back to normal. That's um, a very healthy metabolic behavior. When you are insulin resistant, when you get diabetes or pre-diabetes, your insulin will stay high and it will take way longer for your for your carbohydrates, for your glucose to be taken up by uh, the muscle and even maybe uh, never happens when you are really into a diabetic uh, state. Good. So this is what we, we can test with an OGTT. That's simply an oral glucose tolerance test, OGTT. And it's a very simple test where um, an, a person sits uh, still in a chair and he gets 75 grams of glucose, right? 75 grams. And then uh, you, you check how his insulin is responding. And you see very nicely on the left side, that is a sur group, the red group, is there's a lot, there's a way larger insulin response, um, the, the post compared to the pre-testing. So the follow-up versus the baseline. And that is because they become insulin resistant. You need more insulin for the same amount of glucose to be transported back into the muscles, back away from the, the blood. While for, uh, very nicely, for the SIR plus exercise group, and that's key about this paper, is this doesn't happen. It's completely flat, meaning that even though they ate way too many calories, way too many uh, proteins and fats and, and carbohydrates, their insulin response was still uh, a healthy baseline, so to speak. And then what they also do, um, that's actually quite nice, they took a piece of muscle, or no, no, not a piece of muscle, I'm sorry. Uh, I wish I would, they, they had taken a piece of muscle. They took a, 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 a biopsy of the subcutaneous fat. So they looked also at the fat metabolism, what happens to the genes in the fat, as well as some of the proteins in the fat. So how was the fat adapting? Not the muscle, uh, the fat. And one of the, the, the key things they saw is that um, certain pro-fat and uh, anti-insulin hormones were uh, switched on by inactivity. Okay, I don't have to go through all the different genes here, but you see here in white, these are the SIR group, in this case, uh, white and gray, is that some, for example, uh, SRE, BP1C, and uh, FAS, they, these are genes related to uh, lipogenesis, so, so making more fat cells, are highly upregulated in the SIR group, while in the surplus exercise group, they're, they're, they're less upregulated. Meaning, again, that this um, effect of insulin and, and, and fat building is yeah, suppressed when you do also exercise. And then you also see a very important one that is IRS2, that is insulin receptor 2, is downregulated in the uh, SIR group and in the exercise, the surplus exercise group, it just stays baseline. Again, promoting or showing that the sensitivity to insulin is downregulated by overeating and not doing any exercise, as you would expect, but this is completely protected by exercise. Super exciting finding, in my opinion, and quite interesting uh, to read such a thing. And then you can also look at um, proteins. So these, what I just explained, are genes, right? So, so, so gene expression, but then you also have the actual proteins, the machinery inside the, the fat cell. And here you see uh, basically the same thing, is that uh, ANPK, that is, the sensor, the energy sensor of the cell, of the fat cell, of the muscle cell, even of the brain cell, and so on, was severely downregulated in the ones who only did uh, overeating. And then again, it was even upregulated. So the, the the sensing of energy was even improved when you did exercise. And that's that's a typical effect of exercise. And it's interesting to see that this also happens when you are overeating uh, and so on. So really nice. Uh, let's say, a correlation between the genes as well as some of the proteins, the phosphorylation of the proteins uh, we see in these uh, fat cells. So to conclude, what, they, what the authors found of this short-term uh, study is that um, this energy surplus 
when you don't do any, do any exercise, there is a suppressed NPK activation, so the, the, the cell doesn't sense the, the energy deficit uh, too well, and this will lead to adipose tissue dysfunction related to different genes, gene expression, and importantly, uh, at least the beginning of whole body insulin resistance. And that's key because that's exactly what you don't want. And that's actually the, the main problem in many people who get a little bit older and do less and less physical activity is that this uh, pre-diabetes or this insulin resistance uh, starts to starts to build up. And then this gets pr completely protected, in so to speak, uh, if you just do daily Exercise. 45 minutes of running on a treadmill at a sub-maximal intensity completely abolished or at least protected uh, you from these negative consequences of overeating. Very strong findings, uh, highly interesting. Obviously, it was in a cohort that was already healthy. So what happens if you use a cohort of, of a group of people that are not that healthy? Can you also have the same effect? That's something we don't know because uh, to my knowledge, this study has not been replicated in other uh, cohorts. So the question that I'm going to ask you today, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, interested in what you are going to put in the comments is, can you actually outrun a bad diet, at least on the short term? I leave the answer in the middle. I'm happy to respond on the comments and I'm curious to see if there is some discussion around this because it's always a bit of a heated debate. Can you outrun a bad diet? Most people wouldn't say so, but this study might uh, give you different uh, perspectives, certainly on a short-term, a short-term uh, bad, bad diet. Then, Lastly, I also want to talk about some limitations, even though it's a really well and meticulously done study, there are some limitations. And one of the things that was interesting is the increase in body weight. So what you would think, if both groups have exactly the same energy surplus, they eat 50% of calories to the, to the same extent, that then their body or their body weight should increase by the, exactly the same extent. And what we see here is that the body weight of the SIR group goes from 75.5 to 78.2. That's 2.7 kilograms gain of body weight in one week. So that's a, that's a large amount of body weight uh, gained. And the SIR plus X group um, started at a slightly higher body weight. That's already annoying, right? But anyway, that, that, that's how it is, 78.2. And they went only 1.9 kilograms higher. So... That is a bit strange in my opinion, because if they would eat the same amount of calories, you would think that they would have exactly the same amount of uh, weight going up. This was not really the case, but on the other hand, and I didn't uh, add it here in, in, in the graph, but you can find it in the table uh, down below, is that the fat mass actually increased more in the ones who did exercise. Okay, it was predominantly, and that's also interesting, uh, predominantly muscle mass that was gained in the SIR group without exercise. Okay, so both fat and both muscle, um, but it was specifically muscle that was gained in, in, the, in the, the, the people who did, didn't do any uh, exercise. Good, so that is a limitation. I mean, maybe there were some compensatory mechanisms of the body uh, that they were actually burning a little bit more energy that, than, than the authors were, were calculating for. That's obviously very hard to know exactly, but that's something to take into uh, account. So I would say, don't worry too much this uh, holiday season if you are on some evenings eating way too many calories. If you just go out the next day and go for a night, nice uh, CrossFit session or a high rock session, um, then probably even though you are or you might gain some weight, these negative effects are very likely to be counteracted by high intensity exercise and even low intensity exercise. That's it. We cannot help you with the Christmas dinner, but we can help you with your training plans. If you are interested in training in a structured way, have a look at our high rocks as well as our CrossFit specific training plans. They're all based on uh, the newest evidence, not only from the research, but also from our own studies that we have been doing with the community over the last couple of years, already three years now, and that we implement into our training plans to give you the most structured, balanced, and fun, varied training plan that uh, you will probably find around on the internet. If you're interested in just checking out how we structure our training weeks, how we structure our training phases through the season, scan the QR code that is popping up right now or click the first link in the description. You will get fit along the way and definitely will help support the channel. Thank you for that.
All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Enjoy Christmas, enjoy family time, and don't worry too much about your food as long as you keep exercising.